Hello everyone, welcome to my review for the season 5 finale of My Little Pony, French Miss Magic, the two-part finale known as the Cutie Remark. Um, I just wanted to say quickly that it may look like I'm looking at a script and that's because, well, I am, I'm going to try and look at the camera as much as I can, but when I do have an, an OC with poses and emotions, then this won't be a problem anymore and it will be... Hopefully it'll be very enjoyable, although I'm still going to try and do what a lot of reviewers do and, you know, show you evidence and clips and such. It's just going to be basically a recap of the episode, but my thoughts throughout. That's how I think I'm going to do all my reviews, if that isn't the definition of reviewing for most people. So, before we actually talk about the finale, I just wanted to talk about the premiere. Even though I already did a review on it, I wanted to just quickly establish that we need a ba little bit of a backstory before we can actually hear the true backstory in the finale, which I'll get to. So, in the premiere, we knew about the village known as Our Town, that's how they've called it, and, you know, we, we saw the symbol of equality, we saw that this was basically Starlight's vision, and secretly, the townsfolk didn't like this, the, secretly, they wanted their cutie marks. Now, it's assumed that she basically forced them into equality, but at the same time, it wasn't the worst, they, some people actually liked it, I believe it was Double Diamond who legitimately liked it, whoever the one that actually got thrown into the dungeon, but you could tell that on the surface there was tension. You could tell that the map sending the main six there was just to push it in the right direction, or at least the right direction in the maps. The, I, I, I say the map loosely, you know, but it really is the what the map thought was the best. Obviously, Starlight Glimmer did not like the main six ruining her safe haven or, or, or her ideal utopia. Now, in the cutie remark, we see that she, from the very start, has wanted to take revenge. We've seen her appear twice throughout the season, hidden, and obviously this was to for us to find, so that we could basically see Starlight's keeping a watch on them, and that she is on the lookout for information on what she can use for revenge. And in this case, case, it's the map. Now, she basically uses a spell from Star Swirl the Bearded, and what's odd about it is we don't have an explanation as to why or how she got the scroll, and we don't have an explanation as to how she's able to travel back in time farther than a week, which was what... Twilight said, she said that the scroll could only work for a week in the past. At least that's what Star Swirl was able to do. And if we're to figure that Star Swirl was the strongest unicorn, either one, he's not the strongest unicorn anymore, or two, the spell was rewritten in some way or enhanced or something along the lines of that. Now, where does Starlight go with this time travel spell, this scroll? She goes to the part in the entire series from the pretty much the beginning, the Sonic Rainbow, in which basically that was what unified the main six to get their cutie marks and eventually go back to Ponyville. That's where they basically met up, and that was her intention. Starlight felt that if the Sonic Rainbow didn't exist, then, well, as Twilight said, Without Rainbow Dash's race to defend Fluttershy's honor, this rain boom wouldn't have happened. Fluttershy might never have discovered her love of animals. Applejack might never have realized that she belonged on her farm. And Pinkie Pie might never have decided to leave hers. It might be hard to imagine Rarity without her sense of fabulousness, but it's even harder to fathom what my life would be like. Without this rain boom, I might not have gotten into magic school. Celestia wouldn't have taken me on as her pupil. And because of that, they wouldn't form. And due to the fact that they have taken down so many enemies, Discord, T-Rex, Chrysalis, you could say the Flim Flam Brothers, but they've taken down all these enemies. So if these threats are now back and the main six aren't there to stop them, then according to the episode, that would be a horrible world to live in as seen by the Wasteland. Now, what we see is actually first that the result of the Sonic Rainbow not happening is a world ruled by the Crystal Empire. And this is very interesting because 
it shows basically not just the impact, but this entire part one shows how war actually happens because even though we can't say it's it's canon to the actual timeline, the true timeline, it shows how wars happened. It shows at least how they fought, and I enjoyed that. I'm sure that a lot of the military bronies will find some some thing to compare it to. I know that a lot of people are comparing it to Fallout Equestria or just for the Fallout series, and I agree to an extent because I don't know much about it myself, but it looks like that. Now, we see King Sombra using these masks to, I guess, mind control the ponies, because it looks like that. It seems like it's against their will, because we know that he was basically turning them into slaves, so I think that it's against their will. So, Twilight and Spike then use the spell again and try to stop Starlight, but she already had that figured out and stops them in their tracks. So, after stopping the Rainboom again, the Twilight and Spike return to yet another war timeline in which chrysalis is now in charge and that's the end of part one now at this point my thoughts were very com they were they were very confused because i was thinking i understand if you change how you stop the rain boom in different ways that could alter the outcome however in such a little way it makes you think how does just using magic to stop Rainbow Dash from doing it and talking to the bullies into not bullying, change it from Sombra ruling to Chrysalis ruling. Because that's they're, they're two different things. They're two different rulers. One of them is doing it, as we know, because they're just a tyr tyrannical king. The other one is doing it to feed their, their hive. So it's just such a big shift, and we don't get an explanation, but I didn't expect one. So now we're at part two. And basically, we're stuck in a loop in which they keep on failing at stopping Starlight. And we basically see all the different outcomes, but the next big one is Nightmare Moon. And this one I liked. I got a really big kick out of it when she said that she imprisoned C Celestia on the moon. Which is weird because you'd think maybe she'd have done it on the sun because of her name. But nonetheless, I, l I really liked what she said. She said... That no, she said that it was no less of a fate or punishment than herself. So she was doing it out of um, basically balance and like she wasn't doing anything worse technically than what Celestia did to her. But she, 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 her mind it was very, it was in the wrong place, obviously. But what's odd is the fact that why does it have to be a villain that has to rule over? Why can't it be someone new? or good. Just because Starlight in this case is in the wrong and is sort of a, an enemy, a threat, why does it have to be an evil character such as as we see T-Rex and Discord and the Flim Flam Brothers sort of taking over the world? So we near the end of the episode and we figure out the reason why Starlight has sort of been doing this is because of a personal issue that happened when she was young. We find out that Starlight had a friend, Sunburst, who was gifted in magic and when Sunburst saved Starlight from an incident, he got his cutie mark. And being he was a gifted unicorn, his parents sent him off to Celestia's school for the gifted unicorns. I never saw him again. Well, why not? Because of his cutie mark. He got his, and I didn't. He moved on, and I didn't. I stayed here and never made another friend because I was too afraid another cutie mark would take them away too. She didn't want to have to lose any more friends from a cutie mark incident, which is why she created the whole equality thing. However, when she was young, she, that's her reasoning for not making any more friends or not giving it another chance, which was the wrong thing to do. She just quit at the first fault. Although the book's falling was her fault, it doesn't mean that one, Sunburst should have just got up and walked away, but he was a kid. And two, that she should have stopped trying to make friends. So, eventually, Twilight basically convinces her that she should give another chance into making friends. And Starlight understands the fact after a very, very large and persuading argument. And this is sort of character development for Twilight. 
because it shows how she's able to not argue, but she's able to convince others to give things other chances and to realize, to, to make the connection in their head, what they did was wrong. Now, not saying Twilight or any of the other characters haven't done anything wrong, but in this case, Twilight was able to successfully tell Starlight what the matter was, and that is great for the episode. Now, when we get to the very end, we get to the part where basically the main, the other five, walk in and see that she has been, well, befriended, or at least she's there. They didn't even know she was there. And after talking with her friends, they basically forgive her. And we have a nice song, and the end, and the episode wraps up where they're all friends. But here's the part that I truly don't like so much. The fact is, is that they forgave her so quickly, in my opinion, that they could have done better. It felt rushed. But, on the contrary, I sort of do like the incorporation of Starlight into the main six. And I like how they decided to actually say that Twilight is sort of taking her under the wing. But, at the same time, the writers of this of MLP now have basically stated that Starlight's going to be in it for season 6 at least, if not more. Maybe she'll be permanent. So they're giving her another, a whole season for the main 6 to basically show her lessons about friendship, which could possibly be the case. Maybe they'll have a nice one-on-one -on -one time. Maybe it'll be like the story plot where every few episodes we'll have a one-on-one -on -one um, time with Starlight and one of the main six, and I'm fine with that. However, it's sort of ironic being they rush the finale to forgive her, yet they're going to give her a season, and this is all speculation, to make friends and learn the lessons of friendship that possibly the whole entire main six learned. But other than that, it was still a very good episode throughout. I'm giving the episode a solid 9, 9.5 out of 10, other than that very end. Because the animation for the gears, for the time travel thing, was very nice, and so was the Timberwolves. The moral about giving friendship another chance, even if you lose a friend, and that basically giving up or making, making something that you feel is a utopia, but others don't, is not a good thing. You know, it, it's there, it's a subtle implication not to do that and to give friendship another chance. In fact, at the end of the song, when Starlight goes back to uh, to the town, the, or the old village, and apologizes, that was a big step. And that was a subtle thing. And it's possible that that could have been a punishment, because a lot of people might think Starlight should be punished for what she did, and I agree with that. But... Saying sorry to the village might be that subtle punishment because it takes courage. It it's a hard. I mean, for her, it must have been hard to say sorry to the town that she really made into her eyes, into her vision, but not into the others' ideals. So it was there, and that's why the moral is good as well. Now, the moral progression was a bit slow because the first part was set up for the second part. But other than that, it was a really good moral. The character development was very good for Starlight. And it was for Twilight as well, with arguing and being able to show her, her intellectual greatness, basically. But in terms of Starlight, it was immense. And that's why she's staying around for Season 6, probably. And this is the same thing that happened with Discord, is that... Discord has such a big character development in, in reforming that he was kept around for the, the entire series now. And that's what they're doing with Starlight, because they wouldn't just give her a pat on the back and say, good luck with making friends or whatever, so like Gilda, sort of. But they're incorporating her into the series, which is a big step that the community is going to have to find a way to, to, to just accept. And other than that, that is basically my my thoughts on the finale and I really can't wait for season six but at the same time I'm ready for the now so this is basically my little wrap-up of the season it was a very good season and I know I'm a very optimist person especially with the series because I'm happy that they just make episodes so I really enjoyed it it was definitely the biggest character developing world building season and because of that, I think it was 
one of the better ones, much better than a lot of the uh, a lot of the other seasons, even though there aren't many to begin with. But other than that, I am the Elfie Connoisseur, and I thank you for your time.